All right, guys, today we are starting the build off between the 4.8 LS and the 8.1 Gen 7 big block that we are doing between both of my 2000 Chevy Silverados. If you're new to the channel, you probably want to check out the last video that we did kind of detailing the parameters of this test. But basically, we're doing a dollar per dollar naturally aspirated shootout between the stock 8.1 that I swapped into that Silverado and the 4.8 that is currently in this Silverado. So 3000 bucks and my goal is about 308 horsepower at the wheels and 427 pounds of torque. I don't know if we'll be able to beat that goal or not. I have my opinions on it. I know you guys do as well, but we are going to spend the same amount of money that the swap took and we're going to see which one comes out on top. Um, the very first thing that we're going to be doing is a cam swap in this engine, but I am going to be doing things just a little bit different than you might expect. Normally a cam swap in an LS is a breeze. We're doing things the hard way, but there's also a few other things that we need to fix along the way, and I'll get to that in just a second. First, a quick update on the Suburban project. Last time you guys saw me, or maybe two videos ago, I'm not sure, uh, we swapped the front end over to GMT 800 front brakes. So a long time ago, we did the Chevy Express van axle. It's wider, has disc brakes back there, and now we have GMT 800 disc brakes up front. Uh, go check that video out as well if you're interested. But basically, I just got it done this morning. I took it for its first test drive. I kind of eyeballed an alignment. And I got to say, stopping power is tremendously increased. Uh, I do need to bleed the brakes a little bit better because it has that like uh, Kelsey Hayes ABS module in there. And my scan tool actually won't bleed that. So uh, there's a little bit of air in the system, but still it stops like way better than it did before. And it's a little bit tighter and smoother because the whole front end was rebuilt at the same time. So anyway, I'm going to get that aligned and I'll probably, whenever I get that taken care of, I'll give you guys a quick test drive. But basically the gist of it is, I think is well worth the upgrade. It stops really, really well. And we are still on the stock master cylinder. I haven't switched that out yet. Apparently uh, someone messaged me and told me they had tried the GMT 400 C3500 HD master cylinder swap. And they said it actually wouldn't work on that hydro boost and the fittings were different. So anyway, I just said, screw it. I'm not going to mess with it right now. And it actually stops pretty darn good for having the stock master cylinder in place. So I'm not going to worry about it for now. I don't drive that Suburban as much as I probably should. Anyway, onto the cam swap. That's what we're going to be doing today on this step side. And the gist of it is um, I'm actually going to be pulling the motor out now. That does seem a little bit excessive. And for cam swap, normally all you have to do is like take the core support out, take the radiator out of the way, and you've got plenty of room to slide the cam up front. But this truck, it leaks a ton. Let me kind of show you out here in the driveway because it's pretty bad. Like normally it sits in this spot right here and like <laughs> that is a huge leak right there. And it just drips and drips and drips. And it's coming from, it's either the rear main seal or that rear cover that the rear main seal actually sits in. And I kind of, I like doing things once and I like doing them right. And when you do a cam swap, if you put a new, say, oil pump in, you've got to get to the oil pump pickup tube bolt, which is a pain to get to. So you get to drop the oil pan. And if you're going that far uh, on a four wheel drive truck because that differential's in there, to me, you might as well pull that whole motor out. Now, um, this is a lot of work now that I'm thinking about it, but I, I want to get that leak taken care of. And the only way to do it is either pull the transmission out from underneath or just pull the motor out from the truck. And the jobs are about the same. And I figured the cam swap will be a little bit easier with the engine on a stand. That way I can replace every seal that's leaking, um, give it a once over and put it back together. So let's get to work. Let's pull this motor out and see how far we get today.
All right, guys, we got ourselves an empty engine bay, which means this has been pulled out. Uh, I think when I put this back together, I'm gonna move some more of this wiring harness because that was a little bit of a pain in the butt to work around. Uh, we have a bed full of parts. The one thing I like about pickup trucks so much is when you tear them apart, you've got plenty of space to store everything. I did just want to show you guys real quick how nasty some of this stuff is. Like this is the cross member that bolts underneath the oil pan. And as you can see, like there's just a really, really thick layer of like oily, greasy, uh, sludgy dirt because you know oil drips on there and dust and dirt from the road gets stuck on it i mean the starter is covered all these cross or uh, shields or skid plates or whatever you want to call them everything's got a nice thick layer of oil on there so i'm really glad that i took the time to pull the engine out and reseal it because nothing drives me crazier than working on a greasy gritty and grimy engine like whenever you get your finger in the uh like the dirt and that like sandy grit sticks under your fingernails i hate it so I, I wear those orange gloves and that helps a lot but we're gonna get this thing cleaned up stop all the leaks the right way and then we'll be able to figure out what to do with the rest of the build and Speaking of which, we are kind of at a bit of a crossroads. I've got a bunch of parts I'm going to show you in just a second that we already have here, and I'm probably going to end up ordering some more. Um, first, let me show you where this thing was leaking from, but I guess the short answer is it's kind of leaking from everywhere. Originally, I was thinking rear main seal or rear cover. Uh, the rear seal, from what I can tell, wasn't that leaky. We are going to be replacing it anyway. Uh, the rear cover, there's quite a bit of oil around it, but check this out, guys. This is the little cavity. Uh, it's in the bell housing area, but it's right above the cover and the cam sensor kind of passes down through there. You can see it in there, uh, but check this out. There's just like a huge puddle of oil in that little cavity right there. So basically the O-ring, uh, from what I can tell, the O-ring that seals the cam sensor into the block has failed, but also uh, this connector right here for the cam sensor is filled with oil, which means something internally to the cam sensor has also failed in terms of a seal. So a uh, new cam sensor with all the O-rings on it. The oil pressure setting unit is also leaking. The valley cover is leaking. The valve covers are leaking. The oil pan is leaking. The front cover is leaking. So pretty much everything that could possibly leak oil is leaking oil, but this cam sensor right here is by far the worst offender. So. I do need to order a few more gaskets. I think I have like 85% of everything that I'll need, but this kind of raises the question, like how far do I go? Because you know those words, while you're in there, definitely applies. Originally, I was just gonna plan to tear this thing down, seal it up and put a new cam in it, use my existing lifters, and then just go to the upgrades, you know, long tubes and blah, blah, blah. But I have the engine out. I know you guys are gonna probably tell me like, oh, throw a 5.3 or 6.0 in there. I'm not gonna do that. I want to stick with this 4.8 because I think it's just a really cool comparison to go with the smallest V8 head-to-head -head against the largest V8 that GM made in their pickup trucks in the early 2000s. So anyway, we are sticking with the 4.8, but because I plan on boosting this at some point, I probably should tear it all the way down and open up the ring gaps. You know, these 99 and 2004.8s actually had a composite head gasket instead of the stronger multi-layer steel one. So I'll probably end up doing that. I am trying to watch my budget because I did say that I was going to spend about 3000 bucks. But now because I have all these leaks and I'm thinking about going a little bit further, a lot of that budget will get eaten up just with parts that don't necessarily make the thing go faster but parts that, you know, stop the leaks, because to me, that is really, really important. I want a good, strong, solid foundation to build on, which means, yes, I probably should do the ring gaps, but also I don't want it to leak because that just drives me crazy in my driveway. <laughs> I need to get it cleaned up. Oh, and by the way, if you guys know of anything that'll clean like that oil stain off the cement driveway, let me know because I tried just some like degreaser, it didn't work. So let me know there. Um, Real quick though, I do want to show you some of the parts that we have because I got just about everything for the build minus a few gaskets. So let me head downstairs real quick and I'll show you what we got. All right, the lighting down here isn't the greatest, so I hope you guys can see what I'm about to show you. Um, but to make the goal of uh, 300 horsepower and 426 pound-feet of torque at the rear tire, we definitely need to make some changes to the exhaust because at first we are staying naturally aspirated. So that means headers and the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, we went to Speed Engineering. These are their long, I'm uh, sorry, Texas Speed long tubes, inch and three quarter primary stainless steel. Um, I chose Texas Speed because they have a seamless tube and I think it's a little bit thicker than some of the other ones like Speed Engineering and Pace Setter and so on. 
Um, the X pipe, this is actually a speed engineering part, it's not designed to work with Texas speed long tubes, but it'll probably work. And if not, we can make a few tweaks here and there. Uh, but the reason why I bought their X pipe is number one, I love how an X pipe sounds. Number two, it does help with scavenging a little bit, which increases horsepower, but for like 250 or 280 bucks, however much this cost, um, this saves me a ton of time because I could build something that's a little nicer and maybe had a little bit smoother transition on the X pipe and had a nicer material, but it would take me probably a solid day to reproduce that piece right there. So I'm happy just to buy it um, because there's a 50, 50 chance. I might not use any of this again um, if we do a turbo, but that's part of the reason why I want to do a supercharger just because all this stuff we built here, we'll be able to use throughout the duration of the build. Um, anyway, for the rest of the exhaust mufflers and stuff like that, I originally chose and bought a pair of the Spintech Pro Street 9000 mufflers. These are pretty aggressive sounding. They're kind of chambered. They have like a little spirally thing in there. Um, I have one of these on the Suburban. I kind of like how it sounds. Um, but when I was laying all this stuff out on the floor, I ran across this muffler, which I've used on several different builds before. Originally it was on my LMM Duramax and then I put it on the ugly truck with the 5.3 and then with the 8.1, but it was too quiet for my liking. I loved how it sound, sounded, but I had stock manifolds and stock factory catalytic converters and it was just a little bit too quiet. But one of my favorite sounding vehicles on YouTube is a Trailblazer SS with one of those mufflers and that's a four inch Flowmaster Hush Power Pro Series. Um, so I'll try to put a video clip in right here to let you guys know how this is gonna sound. And as you can tell, it is pretty darn cool in my opinion. Uh, but to make it work with this, I do want to run the X pipe. I would have to merge two into one. So I have, I also bought this for the ugly truck when I was planning on doing that 8.1 naturally aspirated, uh, dual three inch into a single four inch outlet Flowmaster Y pipe. So I don't know how that'll sound together if the Y pipe will cancel out some of the cool sound of the X pipe. Um, but anyway, that's, I'm kind of leaning towards this direction. Still have no idea what I would do for the tailpipe. I have this little side exit pipe I built for the uh, step side when I tried to run it without a muffler. So I could do that. I might just do an axle dump for now because I don't have any four inch material left to build a full tailpipe. Uh, speaking of tailpipe, I am gonna lower ugly truck further. I actually have a uh, Atomic Fab, Richard sent me over some uh, suspension parts. So I'm redoing the suspension. I'm lowering it, putting the different shocks on. So I don't know if the four inch tailpipe that I have for that truck will work with my new suspension setup. But if it doesn't, I'll throw it on the step side. So anyway, it's kind of like recycling. That'll save me some of my budget that I'm trying to spend on this truck. Um, that's what I'm going to do for the exhaust. As far as the rest of the stuff, let me head back upstairs and I'll show you the cam. So probably the one part that's gonna make the biggest single difference in the power gain is going to be the camshaft. And it's also gonna dictate the RPM range where the engine makes its peak power. And I figured rather than trying to fight against the nature of the 4.8, rather than select a cam that's gonna make a lot of mid-range torque, I would play to the strengths of the 4.8 because it's a short stroke, high revving engine and it'll make more, it, to me it makes more sense to build an engine that makes more power at a higher RPM if it's suited to do so. Now my 8.1, that engine's probably never gonna see more than 5,800 RPM, but this little 4.8, we can spin it up to 65, maybe a little bit more. But anyway, um, the cam specs, not crazy, but it's a 220, 224 at 50 and it has a total lift of like 580 and it'll probably be a little better suited for like with a 5.3 or a 6.0, but uh, I think it'll work pretty good for this little 4.8. Uh, along with that, I also have a Summit Racing Torque Converter. I think it's like a 3200 stall, 3400 somewhere in there. Um, I think it'll make a really good combination for something that's street drivable, but also makes pretty good high RPM power. Along with the cam, I got some comp beehive valve springs that'll help, you know, stabilize the valve train at higher RPM and allow for more lift of the camshaft. And that's kind of the gist of what we're doing for the first phase of this project. Uh, long tube headers, full exhaust, cam swap, torque converter, valve springs. And if I have any money left in the budget, I'll 
possibly do like a Trailblazer SS intake. Um, I am going to do like an intake tube. Also, electric fans, we are doing that. That'll free up some horsepower. Won't necessarily create more power, but it'll, you know, free up those parasitic losses. So anyway, that's what you guys have to look forward to. In the very next video, I am going to get this guy up on the engine stand and start taking it apart and then I'll figure out what direction we are gonna take with this build, whether we do a full overhaul or whether we just send it with a few new gaskets. So I do wanna say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate that you made it all the way to the end. Do me a favor though, if you don't mind, click the subscribe button and click the like button on this video. Those two things really, really help the channel grow. Um, so thank you for watching all the way to the end. Um, catch you next time guys. We're gonna be building 4.8.